in 2024 I built an epic M42 M44 Frankenstein 16 valve BMW engine and it turned out to be amazing and made really really good power but this year 25 we're taking it to the next level now in the last few episodes I've actually received quite a few comments around what did we do on the nose of the 320 diesel M47 crank. Now the M44 slash M42 and M47 cranks are very very similar. However the front part of the crank, the nose, is slightly different. And there's a few mods you have to do to make the M47 crank work on this motor and these are the questions that uh, I've received. So I thought let me just run through it and how I got around it. I read up on a few technical articles about this and the way they did it was uh, different to how I did it. So let me run you through how I did it. So what we are talking about is the nose of the crank, the snout and that is essentially this bit the chain sprocket fits on here as well as the dynamic balancer that fits on here now there's a couple of differences between this crank and an m42 or m44 crank the first thing is the snout of the diesel crank is 0.5 millimeters larger in diameter than the m44 and m42 which poses a significant challenge you need to run both or you need to use the timing chain sprocket and the dynamic dynamic balancer on that shaft so both of these need to slide onto the crank so you might say okay well that isn't such a big challenge all you do is you machine down the crank well, you can do that but because the crank is so hard it needs to go to a special engineering machine shop where they either grind it down or they use a very fancy tool to cut it down and that is quite expensive because the tool is super expensive. I didn't go that route. What I did is I went to a friend who helps me with a lot of engineering uh, work and we machined down each one of the sprockets. So we machined the diameter on the uh, sprocket by half a mil and obviously giving it, still giving it a very tight close tolerance, you still push it on but it's quite tight on there because you don't want the sprocket to move around like this at all. So I machined this down by 0.5 millimeters and I machined the dynamic balancer pulley down by 0.5 millimeters. Now the other challenge that um, there is is that the M42 crank has one wood rough key. In other words, one key that is on quite far to the front of the crank snout. Now that key locates in this sprocket and this balancer and they both line up and the key covers both but on the diesel crank the key is in a different position so if you try and just use the one key on both of these the sprocket or the dynamic balancer ends up turning I forget which one it is so you have two options here now the technical detail I read about this was that they machined out a second woodruff key now again that that crank material is so hard that you would need a very fancy cutter to machine out that second woodruff key and that means breaking the surface that super hard surface on the snout of the crank so what we did is we extended the key way and made the key one long key instead of having two keys so we machined down in the existing keyway and just extended it and then we made up one long key that slotted into the crank and that way it covers both of these uh, simultaneously so you don't have two keys you only have one key and that way you also don't need a super fancy cutter to cut a second woodruff key it's also better to have a square elongated key so that you know exactly that they are both lined up and it's less risk of losing a key if you uh, pull it out. So that is challenge two. The third challenge comes in the form of the bolts. So this is the M42 slash M44 uh, crank front pulley bolt. It is an M16 by 1.5 uh, and it is pretty long. But the diesel crank has an M18 thread on the inside of the crank that is larger than M18 by 1.5. So you can't use the M44, M42 
front pulley bolt. So then what do you do if you don't have the M47 crank front pulley bolt? I don't know how long that bolt is either. It needs to be quite long because you're applying an excessive amount of torque on it. So now I didn't have that front pulley bolt because this, uh, these cranks are super hard to find. I found mine in the scrapyard. So um, I had to innovate, come up with a solution. Um, your other challenge is your locating washer. This is very important because this washer has a little step in it and that step centralizes the bolt on this front pulley. So it's very important to have that because that also makes sure that the bolt, the end of the bolt, is not doing anything like this and you get a nice flush straight push on the front pulley. So what I ended up doing, I was actually going to try and find a very very high tensile bolt, a special order one uh, at a special length and um, my engineering friend he builds a lot of these VW um, TSI engines, Golf, Golf 7 engines, um, so he managed to find me a VW front pulley bolt. Now this is also um, a little bit shorter than the original bolt, so if you look at the lengths it is about 5 to 8 mils shorter. However, I have checked the penetration on the thread and this is good enough. So that is your next challenge, is to find a bolt that is going to work. I checked the M52 bolt, the M52 uh, that or M50 um, bolt that's from the six cylinders, that is too short so that will not work on this application. So you need to find yourself a, a front pulley bolt that is more or less 120 millimeters long, 120, or with the washer on 105 millimeters long. That's what you need. M18 by 1.5, 120 mils long if you don't have the washer, or 115 mils with the washer. So those are the three, the three key elements to the uh, diesel crank upgrade. It is um, the diameter of the snout on the front pulley, it's the second keyway, and it is the front bolt that houses everything. So I hope this was helpful. Quite a few people asked for this kind of information and uh, I'm, I'm happy to share it with, <laughs> with the world. If there's anything else you guys would like to know on this uh, specific upgrade, um, please let me know in the comments and yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to try and help. There, there are some uh, nuances that I've done with, uh, with the pistons and the, specifically the cylinder head. It was a lot of engineering detail that went into that. So if you guys would like to see that, please let me know. Thanks for watching. Ciao.